Hi, I'm Sam Ben Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Power Supply for Upper Transistors Gate Driver. There is a relevant video to this presentation. It can be found in my YouTube channel. Here's the link. I'm also going to put the link at the page of this present video so you can click on it and get to this uh, earlier video. So the problem we are handling here is the question of a power supply for a driver of an upper transistor. In many applications, in many converters, we do have a, um, or inverters, we do have an upper transistor that has to be driven. Here I'm showing a half bridge. This could be a half bridge of an inverter or a synchronous uh, buck converter. And here we have the gate driver and obviously it needs a power supply. Now the problem here is that this point, the midpoint, is swinging between the high voltage when the upper transistor is on to the ground level when the lower transistor is on. So this power supply has to swing all the way back and forth, back and forth. There's no common ground here. So this is the problem. There are many ways to solve it and I'm going to discuss some of them. One, which is a classical way, is to put an isolated power supply. Typically, the isolation would be through a transformer. This could be a push-pull, a flyback, a direct with no inductor. It could be many configurations. And this is really very conventional, and I'm not going to elaborate on it. On the other hand, we do have the bootstrap. Well, the idea is that you sort of lift yourself with the uh, bootstrap. And here, what we have is a capacitor, which is keeping the charge and the voltage on it is the voltage required for the driver. And whenever the midpoint is sort of visiting the ground level, this capacitor is recharged through the diode. And then when the midpoint goes up, this diode is blocked and the capacitor maintains the charge required to operate the driver. Obviously, this uh, mode of operation or this uh, approach is only suitable for cases in which this midpoint will frequently visit the ground level. For cases in which you have, say, a load here and you need a constant drive to the upper transistor, without having a ground level here, this obviously is not suitable and it will not work. So what are the other options? One, a very neat approach is to use the charge pump or flying capacitor concept. Here I'm showing it in a generic way. We have the power supply, the auxiliary power supply for the driver, refer to ground. Then we have two switches which will charge this flying capacitor to the voltage. And then these will be open, uh, non-conducting, and these will turn on. And this charge now is transferred to the holding capacitor for the gate driver. So this can be sort of work independently of this operation. Obviously, I didn't mention it for the gate driver. We need some a level shifter to bring up the signal here, which I'm not discussing in this video. So this is a very neat approach. Uh, the question is, how do you realize these switches and how do you operate them? There are a number of ways to do that. And I'm going to show, first of all, the concept here, which is uh, when these are conducting, we have the transfer of energy here, and when these are conducting, we have the transfer of energy here. But in this case, we do need to operate these two switches, and then these two switches. Now, this one is referred to ground, which is okay. So it could be a, say, an N-channel MOSFET. This could be a P-channel MOSFET, but these two have to be a high voltage transistor. And of course, for these, you need some way to drive them uh, when, say, this uh, whole assembly is at high voltage. So then a number of ways to solve the problem, and I'm going to show one of them, which I think is very neat, and that's the circuit. Now here we have two diodes instead of the two switches. The reason is that these do not need to 
conduct current in both direction, only one direction. And therefore, if you need one direction, you can just put a dial, you don't need a switch. On the other hand, we have here two transistors. This is the main transistor, which is toggling, and this one is like a slave transistor, which is operated by uh, this one. This is the flying capacitor, and here is again the hold-up uh, capacitor. So let's see how does this work. When, say, in a situation the voltage is high, for example, this transistor will turn on, it will charge the flying capacitor. Now this transistor is in the off state because here we have like 0.7 when this transistor is conducting and there is a current flowing, while here we see zero, so there is a, in fact, a negative 0.7 volt, but uh, if uh, the capacitor is already charged and there's no current, there'll be almost zero here and zero here. So in any case, this transistor is non-conducting. So all we have here is this one is on and the flying capacitor is being charged to the VCC. Now the next stage, when this transistor is off, in the off position, then this is ground, then this point here, the drain is released, it's not connected to ground anymore because this transistor is not conducting, and therefore, through here, through this capacitor, then we have here a path to the gate, so the gate is charging, now obviously, there's going to be some uh, delay here or a exponential rise of the voltage because this cannot be a very small resistor, but uh, depending on the switching frequency, this could be okay. So now we have this transistor is off and therefore the path here is open and this now flying capacitor is charging the holding capacitor so it is charged to the nominal value. Now this is when the uh, voltage here is high, but it's okay also when the voltage is low, we have the same thing. Uh, for example, in, in this phase, when the transistor in, is in the high state, we are charging the capacitor, but since this is now ground and this is ground, in fact, we have sort of like a bootstrap charging too, but either way, we are transferring energy from the VCC to this capacitor, both for the case that the voltage is high or the voltage is low. Now, there is a paper that has been published in 2005 by Park and Johns, and this paper described a circuit for this purpose. This is a charge pump. As you can see, it's very similar. Uh, it has uh, the two diodes, it has two transistors. In fact, it's the same circuit. I prefer to show it in this way, just to emphasize the fact that you have a, a flying capacitor charge pump arrangement in which you have the transfer of the voltage or the charge from here to here and then to here through these switches. Here, it's just drawn differently the same thing. Okay, this one is connected here, which is basically ground. So here it is. I've just drawn it um, this way. So this paper, in fact, presented this circuit. So uh, they have the credit for it. And I've just analyzed it in a different way. Now, the question is, what's the performance of such a charge pump? It can be shown, and this is discussed in this a video that I'm uh, linking here, that you can represent a, a charge pump converter, switched capacitor converter, by a voltage source and a output resistance, internal resistance, R sub E. And it turns out that this resistance depends on the frequency, switching frequency of the charge pump, of the switched capacitor converter, and on the capacitor in resistance resistance of the switches and it turns out that the value here is the larger between 1 over fc and 4r because 
this is the shape of the RE, it's a logarithmic scale, as a function of frequency. So below this breakpoint, the behavior is like 1 over Fc. The smaller the frequency or the smaller the capacitor, the higher is the equivalent resistance. But then you come to a point in which there is no gain anymore and you see the native resistance of the switches. This will be this point. So it's added here depending on the operating point that you have in your particular circuit. What about the, now what about the amount of current that we need from this power supply? Well, the current actually has two components to it. First of all, we have to provide the quiescent cu uh, current of the, of the driver. Well, it's, it's not quiescent, it's in the operating uh, mode. Plus the charge, it comes from here, going to the gate. Now this is an information that you'll find in the data sheet, the total charge to the gate. So the total charge to the gate times the switching frequency plus this component is the average current that you need from the power supply. So this brings me to the end of this short presentation. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.